Uh, the Democrats, they face kind of an internal debate right about now about whether or not to prioritize abortion rights as a central issue for the 2024 elections, the presidential elections and everything on down, down ticket as well. And it comes up in all these concerns uh, that such a focus like that, Kevin, might detract from, you know, some other issues of concern, some broader things that might be potentially more appealing, like uh, the economy, that being one of them. Well, Tom, for Democrats, it's a messaging strategy that has worked. Uh, putting abortion rights and Republican extremism at the forefront uh, worked in the past two elections, at least. Uh, Democrats, uh, do they go back to that as the key issue in 2024 because it's worked in the past? Uh, if they do, at the expense of talking about, like you said, Tom, the economy, will that end up hurting them? Let's bring in Rashini Rashkumar, political strategist and host of the Crisis Files podcast, also an attorney. Good morning, Rashini. How are you? Good morning, guys. Great to be with you. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you being here. Would you would you agree with me or disagree with me? The Democrats have been pretty successful uh, in, in the past couple of elections uh, with the abortion issue. You know, they have been very successful. One thing we need to keep in mind is midterm versus the presidential cycle year. So those are some things. What else is on the ballot? You know, I think you also have to remember nothing happens in a vacuum. So the various things that are happening, whether it's at the Supreme Court or in a particular state, that will also play into kind of the national sentiment when it comes to the topic of abortion. And in, you know, the, the most recent elections, the Democrats, it's paid off for them. You know, in my own state of Minnesota, we have a fully Democratic legislature and governor, and that hasn't happened in a while. And uh, they really did use that abortion issue in 2022 to uh, gain power. Yeah, that's what happened here in Michigan as well. Um, if if they decide that that's been working and, and they really put uh, that issue front and center again, is there a risk of, of not saying, look, we get it, we, we understand that uh, you're hurting out there financially and the economy is the number one issue? Well, it will be a tough one for them. Here are a couple of reasons why. Their president, Biden, is not very popular right now. I mean, he's it, he's on a slippery slope. He's really trying to convince the country that Bidenomics is working. Not everyone believes him on that. Many are questioning his age. Many are questioning his uh, very senility. So <laughs> those are some issues that not uh, are we always looking at with the president, right, in a presidential cycle. Then you also have a lot of people who are hurting in the pocketbook. So even though it looks like the jobs reports are coming out fairly well, and that helps whomever is in power. It, it's just true that most Americans are a little more skittish about spending. The uh, real estate markets are slowing down. So that economy, the economy and what's happening to our own pocketbooks will end up being a prevailing issue in 2024, is my prediction. Yeah, so, so if the Democrats end up focusing, because you're right, they've been successful when they highlight abortion, they did in the midterms, and I know the midterms are different than a presidential election and whatnot, but they've been successful in that. The, the dangers, though, are pretty significant if they just focus on abortion for the presidential uh, uh, campaigns. Yeah, very dangerous, Tom, because they have to show in any candidate, not just the president, not just that election, but any candidate really has to show that he or she has something to say, has a platform, has something to do with their constituents and for their constituents. And so depending on what part of the country you're looking at, whether it's Michigan, Rhode Island, Texas, California, audience analysis is really what you need to do. So if you're a candidate running, you need to figure out, does the abortion topic help me or hurt me, whether I'm a Republican or a Democrat, in my particular ward or congressional district or if it's a governor uh, gubernatorial race in the entire state. And that's where it's interesting. We are a huge country, a huge nation of different states and different peoples. It isn't always the same. The answer to that question doesn't always come out properly or in, I'm sorry, in the same um, category. So the individual candidate really needs to think about what's happening around them before they jump on board that bandwagon of the abortion issue. So let's, let's put on a, your, uh, I guess, your, your coaching for the Republicans now strategy uh, kind of hat. If, if, if they're, the claim against them, Republicans, is that they're extreme, they're going to once again try to overturn abortion rights in, in this country. 
What is the Republicans' message to that? Is it more of a Nikki Haley saying, listen, that's not even going to come up as an issue because this is now a state issue. It's out of the federal hands. Or is it something more like a Ron DeSantis who says, no, we got to put something in uh, federal law that says you can't have an abortion after 15 weeks? Well, it probably has to be somewhere in between because it, it absolutely is an issue, Nikki Haley. But if you go as stridently as DeSantis is going, you're going to lose a lot of people. The best thing the Republicans can do is focus on the economy, where in a lot of years, they actually come out doing pretty well. So if they can show that their policies for the economy, their policies for jobs, for tax protection, for um, minimizing taxes, which is one of their things, if they can show all of those things and just say, look, I believe in, you know, whatever it is, if it's Nikki Haley, I believe in, in life. And that's why I'll always personally be against abortion. And that's fine if she wants to take that moral stand. But there are others who may also believe in life while at the same time believing in a woman's right to choose. I think it's about articulating in a minimal way what your stance is on, in, on abortion if you're a Republican. And in a maximum way, talk about all the other strengths you believe you and your party have to offer. Here's what I think is going on. I, I think. President Biden is underperforming with young voters and voters of color. And Donald Trump leads him narrowly uh, in in those categories. And and I think that uh, President Biden uh, or his team thinks that the abortion issue, uh, if it if it if it's raised up, could could shift that back. Is that an issue that could shift back uh, young voters and voters of color? You know, that is a really good analysis, Kevin. It's just I, I, I just I'm so I'm still, I guess, personally stunned. And in 2023, we are letting this issue be so divisive. Right. And it was a very big deal when Roe was overturned. It was a very big deal. But there is a case for each state doing its thing. There is actually a case for that in our federal system. And so I don't know that we can lump all young people and all people of color into one bucket. I myself am a person of color. I am also a small business owner. I am someone who doesn't want to pay a lot of taxes. I want to have some sort of security. So all of those things, the different candidates and the different parties really need to think about and not do a broad stroke brush over what's happening. But really, Kevin, as you point out, Biden is having problems right now on a lot of fronts. And that's really the bigger deal that the Democrats should be focused on. Yeah, I I still believe that Joe Biden is not going to be the candidate. I think something has got to happen because more and more Democrats are stepping up saying, listen, we don't want him in 2024. We'll see what happens. Rashini Rajkumar, political strategist and host of the Crisis Files podcast. Good to talk with you, Rashini. Thank you. You too, guys. Thanks.